Hello everyone, this is Nassim from the Department of Instruction Management. I'm very happy to show you how Zoom works, how useful it is, and how it's a great resource for your classes or any future meetings. The first things first, I would recommend downloading the application to your laptop, whether that be PC or Mac. Here you can Google download Zoom, you'll find it upon the download center. Click download, it takes a few minutes, very easy to walk through. Upon its completion, I would recommend you sign in with your Fresno State email, whether that be student or faculty. Now, we'll walk you through how to schedule a meeting in the future. You can click schedule. Let's say this is for a CM7 course. Let's say it's for today at 4 p.m. Here, you can, um, you can first go through uh, the automatic gen meeting ID. I would keep that the same. Requiring a password, that is definitely up to you. Um, you can always put it in your own code. Um, for the video capabilities, what this means pretty much is upon start of this video call, will I, the host, want to be seen? Um, sometimes it makes it very personal. It's totally up to you. For two participants, this means will the people that will be joining you for your meeting, whether that be your class, um, your class and your students, would you want their video to be on? That is totally up to you. Um, of course, I would highly recommend that if you do this option, you would please let the students know in advance. That way they know they will be recorded. So let's say I put off for this. As far as audio goes, what this means is sometimes some students or faculty do not have access to internet. What you can do is definitely choose the telephone and computer audio. I'll show you more about that later. Uh, this gives them both options. As far as calendar goes, I would always recommend Google Calendar. Um, it is very universal. Everybody that uses the Fresno State email has access to Google Calendar. As far as the advanced option goes, the waiting room option is really good. I would definitely click it. What that means is, let's say you are late to your call. The people that are joining the call will be able to see that they are in a waiting room and that they are waiting to gain access to the full meeting once you arrive. If you don't choose that option, maybe they'll think that there's something wrong with the call and that they're not able to join. Enable join before host. What that means is um, students or faculty who are joining the call before I get there or the host gets there, um, they will be able to be in there and uh, talk amongst themselves unless the next step, you mute, th mute them upon entry. The good thing about this is, let's say the students are signed in, um, you haven't got there yet, sometimes chit chatter will happen and you will not be able to start on time because it takes a while for you to kind of silence the, the meeting in order for you to be able to speak. Another good thing about this is, let's say the, the class is already in session, someone is coming late. What this does is once they sign in, you can't hear what they're saying. This might interrupt your classroom or anything else in the meeting. And this is totally up to you. One more important function is the recording the meeting function. Here it says automatically record the meeting on local computer. What this does is it gives you the option to record four files, I believe. The first file is the video recording, kind of the screen share of everything you've showed. The second is the audio file uh, for you to, if you just want to upload the audio later for your class to see. The third option is the audio file again, but in a different format. And the fourth is the chat. So let's say you have all the messages, you're able to um, save the chat and be able to read through if there's certain questions you need to look over later or any other things for your concern. Um, what you can do is you can click schedule. So now I'm going to sign in to FSCM. Click allow. And now it pulls you to the Google Calendar screen. This shows that today we will be starting the meeting at 4 p.m. Uh, next, you have the colors, it's totally up to you. Um, here are the, the call-in numbers. Sometimes it might take more than one call. We've had some issues where someone was only able to contact through the Chicago number, even though we're in Fresno, California. However, if you use the internet, it should be very simple. Now, let's say I'm going to add this to myself. We're about to send this out, and we'll go ahead and give this a shot. And as you can see here, here's the Join Zoom meeting link. The, uh, pers the recipients will see this on their calendar, they'll be able to add this to their calendar, and uh, they will be able to access this meeting via this link. The other bright side is, this link right here is, if they haven't downloaded it already, sometimes when they click this link, it'll direct them to downloading the Zoom application right off the bat, which is great. 
So I'm going to email this to myself. Now, as you can see here upon my schedule, I'm able to see this meeting happening. Now, if I go back to the application, I can see that um, I have a scheduled meeting today for 4 p.m., even though it's 4 or 3 p.m. right now. Now, I can always start this meeting, but before I do so, I wanted to show you real quickly another way to schedule your meeting. You can Google um, Fresno State Zoom, and this is the, pretty much the same process. You can click Log into Zoom if you're not comfortable doing it upon the app. Um, here is already the meeting scheduled, but I'll just show you. You can click Schedule New Meeting. Here you can type in all of your information. It asks you the same amount of questions, whether that's requiring a password, a host, on or off, audio, telephone, and whatnot, new participants upon entry, enable waiting, um, waiting room, and much more. It is pretty much the same process, fairly simple. Uh, you don't have to worry about the webinars. That's usually with, it's a bit more complicated. I would just say stick to scheduling meetings. Webinars are probably for larger amounts of people. And yeah, we'll go ahead and get started with this meeting. So here I am. As you can see, I'm going to join with computer audio. So now I have clicked to add to this meeting. And now upon my screen, it says Nassim has entered the waiting room and he wants to wait for this meeting. So on my other screen, it shows that there is a CM waiting room. It's actually a really great thing for people to see. So I'm going to admit Nassim. So now, here it is on my phone. You can see that I am in this meeting and Nassim is on the screen. And on, on the phone, it gives me the option to join the audio and much more. Now, since we have the class up and going, there's also a chat that I want everybody to see. So this gives me an option to say hello to everyone in the classroom. Also, it gives me the option to do a private message to Nassim, whether that say, hi Nassim, did you complete your homework? On the other end, the students are able to send you private messages as well. For instance, I'm able to raise my hand from the other end. And what that does is it lets students kind of call on you whether they're all muted or whatnot and they want to get your attention. And you can take care of them. So you can address it, you can lower their hand. On top of that, you can chat, you can say, here's the answer to your question. Uh, the private message is really well because it allows students to um, ask you things that they're probably afraid to ask around the class. Uh, whether that be they are kind of worried about what their question is, they should always feel comfortable to do so. Also, you're able to share your screen, for instance. So I can show my screen, my laptop, um, and other options, my Google Chrome, whether that be I want to show something I'm looking up, and much more. I'm going to cancel that. Also, it gives you the option to record. I believe this records the, uh, this will record the screen on. Also, it gives you the option to record. With the recording feature, you're able to kind of record what you're doing on, going on in class. Also, it gives you the option to record. Upon recording, you're able to uh, show anything. Or um, Also, it gives you the option to record. The record feature is really great in case you want to record your class lecture. I'll also show you another way to do that. And what you can do is actually, upon setting up your meeting on this website, which I really like, is you're able to save it. And for the next tab, it gives you the option to send it to Google Calendar. Other than that, we want to thank you for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to email fscm at mail.fresnostate.edu. Thank you.